I'm not going to read everything on all the slides. I'll just highlight a couple of things. But in the first year, in the CPD course, the students are exposed to cases, patients who have ailments in a number of different specialty areas. And they begin to get to learn about what it's like, for example, to work with patients with gastrointestinal issues all day. Um, one of the most enjoyable parts of this job is that each of the deans meets, meets for half an hour or so with each student in a little getting to know you interview. And um, we ask a little bit about background, a little bit about motivation, a little bit about plans. Does anybody have an idea what specialty they might like? Any special issues? We really want a foundation on which to build the relationship that will we'll, um, sustain with the students over the next four years. The students will tell you about the specialty clubs, the departments, sponsor free lunches. <laughs> if you want to see a student, just offer a free lunch. You know. um, and so the, you know, the surgeons will come in every so often and the surgeon will speak and um, gather the students together to talk about being in surgery. During the advising sessions, which can take place either instigated by the student or by the dean, um, we're going to ask things, you know, are things going for you? Is the new curriculum working for you? Have you had to change your study patterns? Um, did you come in with things that are working that you can share with your colleagues? Um, what are your needs with respect to those who know yourself and the disciplines and the process? Um, what can we do to try to help meet any needs that you have? And is there anything else going on? And students being in the age at which they're at, there's always something else going on. Um, we have resources on our website that the students can go to. There's one called Career <coughs> Planning. You can see it's got a lot of interesting stuff on there. Um, parents can get into this website as well families can. And then the Association of American Medical Colleges, our um, med school umbrella organization, has a wonderful website called Careers in Medicine that has really fantastic resources for students. Specialty pages with in-depth information about specialties, work hours, um, manpower issues, person power issues, salary, you name it. Plus they have inventories that students can take that um, will help them know uh, which specialties match with the qualities that they're looking for in their work. Um, it's, a, it's a really very wonderful resource. Um, in second year, uh, we the, the specialty clubs and uh, CPD um, exposure to patients in different uh, uh, specialty areas continues. Um, the systems um, also will bring in patients that students can see and bring in clinicians to talk about the patients. So the students are exposed to the real world of what it's like to be a hospital doctor taking care of people with different specialties. And students are encouraged to shadow any of the physicians um, that they um, know on the faculty and call somebody up and say, hey, I'm free next Friday, can I can shadow you in the clinic? Um, in the clerkship year, um, you can see the clerkships is all speckled pink and green because that's constant, all day, every day. Learning what we like, you know, I thought I liked surgery, but man, there's an awful lot of blood involved in that. <laughs> I wanted to go into pediatrics, but I can't stand crying kids, so I didn't want to do something else. More often, what we find is students say, I had no idea I was going to love surgery. I really thought I could never tolerate anything that intense, but I love it. I love the sacredness of it a lot. So it's much more common that at the end of the year, we have students coming in to see us saying, I like doing I don't want to children, so I'm going to have a hard time. We talk about really pushing um, some things and embracing others. Um, in the post question, we hear a little bit about that from Dr. Keeley. Um, the students have uh, the opportunity to choose to fill in the gaps in their education, to strengthen areas that they really enjoy, um, to perhaps work at another institution, um, do something in another country. Um, and it's a, it's a long year because there's a lot of goals that students have to accomplish during that year. And the, not the least of which is passing step two of the board exams and then applying for and getting interviews at residency programs. And we will advise the students individually up to the point where they've chosen the specialty and then they have um, an advisor in that specialty who knows way better than we can what the residency requirements are, what are the good programs, what are the programs that match this particular person's interest. And we can help guide the student to choose um, to list and hopefully get interviews at and then rank on the special computer matching at the end of the year um, those programs that they would be best suited for. 
the alumni host program. Our medical alumni association is just awesome. I'm not an alumnus of this organization, but I donate to them because they do so much for our students. They are just totally fantastic. Um, the host program um, is when uh, graduates of the VA medical school who live in countries all over, excuse me, cities all over the country, um, agree to host a student who is in that city for an interview, for a residency program. So it saves the students lots of money. They don't have to stay in a hotel. But it also provides a connection to that city. Somebody who knows what it's like to live in the city, somebody who may know the institutions, who can offer an insider's view uh, into what it would be like to live in that particular area. So our host program is something that we treasure deeply and that provides just an enormous and wonderful service to the students. And we do a lot of talking. And um, let's see, we are an institution that works hard and plays hard, too, because wellness you can't get through a life as a physician without paying attention to your own personal wellness. A physician is their own most important tool. You have to keep that tool in good condition. You can't let it get rusty or saggy or miserable. And so um, we um, talk with the students a lot about the importance of eating well, sleeping well, playing well, taking time off, relationships, friendships, family, and so on. We really believe that and try to pull them out of that. Um, we are also well connected to other services that the students might need. Um, I happen to work at Student Health, I run the GYN clinic there, so we can get students in to be seen when they're ill very quickly. Um, we have a counseling and psychological services, a disability access service center, we have an um, um, improving academic support program that is at a very exciting time right now, we're getting more and more resources for that. So we're the place that students come when they need a resource we can help them choose the right resource and help them get in and get those services as quickly as possible. Um, our goal is the student's success, and success is matching at a program and a specialty that the student wants to be in. And that happens on match day, which is sort of the third week in March usually. Um, our students do extremely well in the match. Um, this, these photos are from last year. The orange shirts are to, order our, are to honor our predecessor. Um, Dr. Dick Pearson, and it says, keep, car, keep calm and match on. There's a little photo, a little drawing on the top that's Dr. Pearson on the top. And you can see that people are extremely happy as they open their envelopes and learn where they'd be spending the next three to you know, ten years <laughs> So we're, we're very, very lucky to have jobs in which it's the student success that matters. If the students are successful, we're successful. And that makes it easy because the students are just possible. So here we are now, and is our team here? Did she arrive yet? Oh, in the back. Um, I'm very, very pleased to be able to introduce you to our new dean. How long do we get to call you new? <laughs> She's been with us full time, I believe, since August. Um, comes to us with not only an MD, but a PhD and an MBA as well, right? So she knows everything there is to know about everything. And she's helping us become a better institution. I would like us all to warmly welcome Dr. Dean Dunmer. Thank you. The other day, um, as you know, I'm fairly new, and I was sitting in my office working, and I got an interesting phone call. It was a student, and the student said, we are arranging dinners at your house. Who would like you to come? <laughs> I thought, what an interesting invitation. <laughs> um, but when um, Barry asked me to come and talk with you all today, he asked, he said, what, tell them what is unique about UVA. What's different about this place? And I thought back to that story because where else would the students take the initiative to call the dean and say, you're invited to your own house? <laughs> um, I had an opportunity to meet with the first group of students. Um, they took care of everything. It was pretty remarkable. They communicated to all the students their sign-up sheets. They checked with my calendar. You know, they, they get everything organized, so I just have to go. Um, but it was one of the most fun evenings I've had in quite some time. We had students of all different um, classes, and they were sitting around, and they started telling me what was different about UVA. They had friends all over the country. 
and they said that when I called them, they're tired, they're depressed, they feel like nobody cares, and that's just not the way it is here. Um, you can see from the, is it arrhythmics? I don't know if they're cardiologists in the room, but that means a heart dysrhythmia. <laughs> um, but there are so many different things and so much um, student-led activities that they feel that this is their place. And I think with that comes engagement, comes excitement, and comes some true deep learning. I want to tell you a little bit about the School of Medicine and how it connects with the greater, greater university because I think that that is a huge advantage that we have. As you may know, most medical schools are in larger cities that are detached from the main campus of the university. And the reason for that is that that's where people are and that's where you have health care. But UVA is a bit different. We only have 250,000 people in this, in this area. And the medical school is connected to the entire university. I mean, it's contiguous. So you just walk across the street and you're in the College of Arts and Sciences, the School of Architecture, whatever. Um, the School of 